Hey lovelies, you're welcome back to Reviews and Recaps. Today we're going to be talking about Summer's House, Martha's Vineyard, Season 2, Episode 3. It's going to be a review. I'm also going to be playing some clips for you guys. Um, and also to avoid copyright, I am going to be pausing it and we're going to be reacting together. Um, so I'll pause at times in between and then we'll talk about it, we'll react. Um, and then you guys can also just watch along with me. Let me know your thoughts um, in the chat. And yeah, let's let's do this. So I'm going to start by playing um, this clip. Um. Okay, well, off to an interesting start, isn't it? Um, if you're new to this channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do re reviews and recaps, just as my name suggests. I also do like a cover commentary on celebrity news here and there. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that bell right next to it. So you know every single time that I post. Um, also, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps with the algorithm. It helps get my name out there a little bit more. So I really, really appreciate you guys doing that for me. Um, and yeah, let's let's get into it. Bring your over here then. Bring your okay, just to give you a little bit of a recap as to what happened here, especially if you have not watched this video. Essentially, the whole cast are having a meeting to decide whether or not they should by two house guests or two people to be guests um on the show right so for instance one is phil phil was the guy from last season who came and acted a fool he literally did all sorts of nonsense and um, and then the second person was mariah who had an issue with bria and also sort of got into it a little bit with amir um so let's play the clip now so this is a re cap sort of a recap clip of the um one of the altercations that phil did have with the rest of the cast you're gonna see what a little ass can do to your big ass i don't owe him shit. okay so just some context you can see bria here shaking her head that's because bria and shanice wanted to invite phil back to the house this season and people are not having any of it. Can you blame them? Phil was doing the absolute most. You're not the only one that feels that way. You're not the only one that feels that way. He gives me a lot of vibes I think are very off-putting and unhealthy as Okay. Like, Preston was direct. I love how he articulated it. You, know, you, you all don't really be cursing, but I completely appreciate him being out there and being forthcoming this is how i feel he made me uncomfortable i do not want him in the house you can absolutely respect that and at the end of the day if you guys watched the previous season you know that phil overdid it to be honest and if phil was a sensible human he would have had a conversation with the girls to say first of all can you put me on speaker for let me apologize let me apologize to everyone first regardless so it's usually better to start off with an apology first before you then ask for something, especially if you've done such like a you've committed such atrocities. Um, the way the way Phil has, I almost said Nick. Bless Nick. Sorry, Nick is like, how did I get in it? How he came in last year, he makes me feel uncomfortable. Absolutely no. My answer is okay. Are you guys watching Bria's reaction? Because I have a lot to say on Bria in a second, and I will be showing you that. But you guys watch Bria's reaction to Phil, no, sorry, to Preston, being clear that he is uncomfortable with Phil coming back into the house. Changing. I really appreciate Preston sharing his feelings. The way. So did I. So did I. But let's let's press it along. Let's press it along. To be who they are. I'm confused why Rhea and Shanice want him here. Definitely ruins how I view their opinion of other people. It's not going to be like that. She yeah. called him the next morning. <laughs> All of them. And I quote. The fact that Preston remembered that Phil called and said F all of them, like that he was pissed. He must have really, it must have really gotten to him. Like, 
because thinking about it, you're remembering almost verbatim what someone said a year ago, you must have been really pressed about the issue. I don't think I would remember anything someone did to me a year ago, to be completely honest, unless I was really pressed about the issue. I remember what they said almost verbatim. Like you see them play the recap now and you see how it was almost verbatim. Preston was pressed and he has a right to be. I can't, like, I know that things transpired with Phil, but I, cut, I couldn't remember like that of an issue between him and Preston. But I guess there must have been something that serious for Preston to still remember and hold on to it that much. Can you just say sorry to everyone? Who's that? Phil. All of y'all, I'm out. Like, who says that? The next morning after behaving like a complete... <sighs> okay, I'm not going to curse. <laughs> like a complete mofo. And you're being asked to apologize. And then you literally just say, F all of y'all, I'm out. Like, what kind of childish, immature clown is that? So like I said, I would have appreciated if you wanted to be invited to something, come with an apology all across the board. I'm so sorry, guys. I had a little bit, I don't know, come up with a good story. I don't know. Or just full on apologize. You know, I've grown now and is then like something. Like it's a bit unreasonable for Bria and she needs to think like it's all water under the bridge. A year later, when there hasn't been any movement, no apologies whatsoever. It's, it's clownish. I'm still drunk. With me, we got into damn near a physical altercation. And you see? And that's as true. Like, it's like it was a serious issue. It's not as easy. It's not the same with another instance that we'll be talking about in a second. But it feels like Phil had something with almost all of the castmates, right? Some sort of interaction that like, let's say he did that to one person, right? People will probably be feeling like, okay, okay, you and this person got off on the wrong foot. But like almost all the guys and then and then Jordan, it's like, seriously, like what the heck is wrong with you? Like there's too, it's too much now. I never got an apology. You ain't gonna see the same Alex comes around and I guarantee you that. Oof, Alex is like, if you bring him around, I'm not gonna be the same Alex. Do you know what? I love people that are vocal about how they feel. What would have been worse is for these people not to be vocal and then he shows up and everyone does not want to interact with him. I would, appre I would prefer people to be like, say what you mean and mean what you say. I don't want to go around me. He makes me uncomfortable. So that everyone knows now and then everyone can make sure he's not around you. And, and so for me, I appreciate how all of them communicated. I like that. So I'm not with it. I'm gonna say no, I'm not gonna be verbose. I mean, I think <laughs> Nick is like, I'm not gonna be verbose. I'm gonna get into all of that, but it's a no for me. And I'm like, I respect that, Nick. I respect that. So no. Doesn't make logical sense. We can't argue with you. I would argue. You guys don't want to hear he's not gonna come. And that's what I like to hear. Because at the end of the day, it's like majority of people do not want him there. I completely agree that there is no reason for Mr. Phil to be on our streams again if majority do not want him here. Now, the people who want him here, like Shanice and um, what's her name again? I almost forgot for a second. Bria, they could have a one on one with him outside of that. And that's something that the cast members did talk about. But it's not really something I want to go into. So I want to shift gears a little bit to when the shoe is now on the other foot with Jasmine trying to invite Mariah. Let's play. They're literally acting like this man committed a murder. He didn't physically assault anybody. Maybe he physically assaulted with his words. But yeah. So you guys can hear how Bria is really minimizing the rest of the people's experiences to say oh well he didn't declare not anybody so now verbal abuse is fine as long as it's not physical is that what you're saying Bria right you're saying all of these things especially even Jordan said there was almost a physical altercation right 
And yet you can sit in your confessionals and say, oh, well, they're acting like this man tried to murder somebody. This is what I mean, because she doesn't have a personal issue with this man. She is struggling to empathize with the experiences of her other castmates or friends, right? Now, let's see when things now shift gears and then it's now time for her and she feels like she's not getting the empathy that she wants. Let's see. Yeah, but if you're gonna let somebody's words get to you, I don't know. Maybe you should check yourself. If you guys want to hang out with him, hang that's fine. Me. We can go do something. How do you feel about Mariah coming? Uh -huh. I don't have no problems with Mariah. Okay. I would love Mariah to come. Look at that face. She looks like she wanted to literally get pressed in with something, man. <laughs> she did not like that at all. And I'm like, ma'am. Did you just forget what you just tried to say and do like a few minutes ago? Like, I'm not understanding how you're cool with that. You want this man that almost got, in, got into it with all of your friends over. But then you don't want one person that got into it with just you and Amir, right? You don't want her to be there. That, that, that's what I mean. That's a double standard. I feel like Bria is childish, she's immature, she likes to play the victim, and she feels like her feelings should supersede everyone else's feelings. You are allowed to feel how you feel, understandably so, because you and Mariah got into it. I completely agree. However, imagine how you were fighting so hard for Phil that done things to every single person. But then when the shoe's on the other foot, you want, you don't want empathy for Mariah? It doesn't make any sense, sis. It's like your feelings must be the end and be all. Let's keep watching. I would never want to blind cut anybody. I understand what we all see her shaking her head. She don't want Mariah there. Just keep watching. All went through as a group. I don't want to talk. Now she gets up like the child that she is to say, I don't want to talk anymore. What happens to using your words? When everyone had to sit through the conversation about you wanting to bring Phil, who disrespected everyone and the house, you wanted everyone to sit and listen and be like, oh, Phil didn't murder anyone. But now you don't want to talk about Mariah? You don't want to talk about Mariah? Like, seriously, ma'am. Like, it's the pot calling the kettle black. That's what it's given. Anymore. Y'all like, getting on my damn nerves. Y'all get on my damn nerves. Ooh, is damn a swear word? I hope not. Because I said it like twice. But anyway, like, seriously, what is going on with you, Bria? Like, I thought she would have matured from season one, but I feel like she is the same bratty, immature, spoiled person that we saw in season one. Well, I, at, le at least she's, she's sticking to who she is, isn't she? She knows who she is and she ain't changing it. Not sure if that's a good Again, thing. I don't want to make any assumptions, but I know we're gonna have other guests and friends and partners, things like that coming. It's fine, but things happen between me and her and I feel like that is like, oh, she she disrespected Bria. You see what I mean? She is like, oh, things happen between us. She disrespected Bria, and it's okay. Well, you're the only one that she had an issue with, like a serious issue with, right? You're the only one. So, what do you want? You want the empathy that you didn't give them when they were talking about Phil? This is what I mean. It's like the double standard. You didn't give them empathy. You didn't give them any of that, but then you want them to give you that. And then you're upset because everyone does not have an issue with Mariah and they're not jumping on the bandwagon to be like, oh, we don't want Mariah. They want Mariah. You're the one that doesn't want Mariah. Ooh, and there is a knock on my door. So I'm gonna pause this. So I'm back. I really hope the audio is good because I actually just realized I didn't even connect. You guys, I did something silly. I didn't connect the microphone to this recording. Instead, I connected it to my phone. I'm like, sis, where is your mind? I'm so sorry, guys. If the, I hope the audio is okay. 
um, so far. But yeah, let's continue. She can get away with it. Uh, nobody wants to address that. I personally. Okay, so now you're like, oh, she can get away with it. No one wants to address that. Ma, you were just there five minutes ago, or maybe less, or whatever. We don't know what the edits were. But you, just a few moments ago, you were okay with bringing Phil. Phil got in people's faces. Phil cursed people out. And you were okay with it. But all of a sudden, you want empathy. No one is saying things, things, things. Like, I'm like, girl, cut out. Spoken to Mariah about you, you and her and about Amir and her. And, and interestingly enough, I feel like people need to give Jasmine her credit. I feel like she actually, like she said, had a conversation with Mariah about it. And also what you come to see if I don't play the clip is what you what what I want to add if I don't play the clip is that a mayor she also had a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation with a mayor about it last night and a mayor was cool with it. So it sounds like she is actually trying to make sure everything goes smoothly and like they're on a decent enough standing or footing, right? So I feel like People don't like to give Jasmine her credit, but I think she is doing a good job of being sort of like the middle person or like the peacemaker in this group at the moment. Her intention is good energy and just being on the same page and having fun. I trust you. And this is also part of the not being able to, having that victim mentality, not being able to speak and say what it is that you mean. She's just like, mm, I trust you. Her whole energy, her whole vibe has shifted. But instead of communicating that, she throws tantrums like a little child, right? Like she got up, water off, and then, oh, I don't want to have this conversation. Like you could have simply said, I do not like the fact that she's coming. But at the same time, everyone else wants her here. So as long as she comes here and she gives me an apology for getting in my face, like, just communicate. Communicate. If you did not want her here, communicate that as well. I just feel like you then just being thrown tantrum saying, oh, nobody wants to have empathy for me. No, but it, it, like, it's childish. Say what you mean and mean what you say. It's just, that's the thing about Bria that I can't stand. It's so immature. And I feel like, you've grown enough to have the conversation ma'am like you're grown enough to be able to express exactly how you feel you're grown enough to be able to be like okay this is a group of us i'm the only one with an issue with her so all right fine i'll be a team player and let her come but i need an apology as soon as she gets here or whatever right it needs to be peaceful between us from then i'm not starting nothing but i need to know that she is not on that wavelength at all at all Sorry. Am I fighting a sneeze? <laughs> oh, it was like a sneeze and a cough. Sorry, guys. I, I didn't have enough time to like cover the mic. So I hope that is not too bad for you guys to listen to. But anyways, let's move on to the next clip I wanted to play for you guys. Um, where Bria decides to confront Jimin about what she found out through Phil that Mariah had already initially booked her ticket to show up to Summer's house, Martha's Vineyard. All right, Just Summer House. <laughs> Do you know what? Nick actually be giving facial expression. Nick is like, ooh, he's giving that like little side meme. Hmm. I wanted to invite her for sure. But that's her ticket already booked. As of now, is her ticket already booked? I'm like, okay. Honestly, I feel like Phil just wanted to start drama by going and saying, oh yeah, she books a ticket. We're meant to meet. Like, dude, social cues. Like, the way from the response, he should have clocked on that, oh, she did not know before. Instead, he continued to give more information. Oh yeah, she'd booked it for a while now. We talked about it for a while. Shut up. 
bro. Shut up. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's since when? Yeah. She's like, since when? <laughs> now, I love this style of conversation in the sense that you ask questions to get the information it is that you want before you then get to the points that you're trying to make. I actually think that's a really good strategy of like interrogation. Oh, okay. So you said about this, you know, sort of like prodding people so that they can talk about what it is they're interested in or, or what it is you want them to talk about and so that you can get the honest truth because they don't know where you're going with it. Right. So for me, I, I, I love that style. So Bria, I can give you that. Only last night. Okay. Yasmin, that's probably a lie. And you probably know that that is a lie. Um, and yeah, there's no reason for you to lie on that. Now, it may be, let's give Jasmine the benefit of the doubt. It may be that she did actually know for a fact that she had booked the ticket. She had talked to her and said, I'll talk to these folk. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to these folk and then we can see you know, what they say and then all that kind of stuff. And that lady might have just thought, you know what, let me, I don't have any issues with anyone but Bria. Let me just book it first. I don't know. Just five days ago okay so it's still a recent thing like i feel like everyone is acting like oh she had booked it weeks in advance it was five days ago she booked it five days ago like seriously why are we making such a huge deal out of it five days ago she booked it like what's the point what's the issue now, I do understand from Bria's perspective, she's feeling like, yo, you all already decided to bring her regardless. And then I'm sort of like, you're just, you're saying it for same purposes. Like, yes, you're making, you're giving me an illusion of choice. Oh, what do you think about, what do you think about Mariah coming? When you know fully well that Mariah is coming regardless. So I understand why she's upset and she has every reason every reason and every right to be upset about it two things can be true i don't know where this narrative came from you meditated no girl even that laugh is given mm, yeah it's a little premeditated said jasmine i actually don't believe that you didn't know about it your smile is giving it away it's giving i'm a little it's giving i'm a bit i know about it I'm not gonna say nothing. You're not gonna hear it from me. That's what is given. I really wish like they would have like reunions because I feel like there's some stuff that I like to get to the bottom of. Like that is one of them. When did you know Jasmine? When? That's what I'm trying to know. But anyways, let's keep watching. Y'all know how flights work. If it was a no from the house, careful. Now, that is something she is right about. You all know how flights work. This is true. Because think about it from an economic sense, right? There is a chance you're going to be on the show as somebody's guest. There is a chance you may not be. If you don't book the ticket in advance, it's going to end up costing a lot. So what you want to do is book it in advance and then make sure it's an amendable ticket or refundable ticket. So if it does not work out, you can get your full refund. Everybody's happy and all move on. And I feel like that is what may have happened in this situation. I understand how Bria feels, but I'm just saying that that may have been what the issue or how it happened in this situation. But let's just watch it because things go left real quick. After our conversation, you know, we called Phil to talk with him to let him know that it's a no-go. <laughs> he said he plans on meeting up with Mariah once she gets here. Wait, to come in the house? Preston is pressed like a panini, man. He's like, wait, to come in the house? I'm like, okay, no. Like, let her finish her sentence. Like, this is the thing also about, like, being in friend groups and, like, massive or big friend groups. 
it's just like things can escalate real quick especially when you're having like just regular schmegular conversations that you're like oh a little this here a little this here sometimes it just has potential to escalate and you're just like why like what is going on you know so i'm i'm just like yeah i'm not here for that at all that's the plan he's not welcome in the house but what will prevent <sighs> yeah i'm summer because i'm just like what is going on of course they get irritated people are like oh it's not welcome in the house i just I don't want to go into it because i'm just like seriously it's not that deep he will meet you all outside whoever wants to see him will meet him outside you guys have already established that but anyways let's move ahead i'm just like this is the thing i hate about like big friendship groups you'll be having a conversation with one person about something then other people interject about something and then it's like the conversation grows legs and wings and you're just like Oh, how has this shifted away from what it is I wanted to talk about to begin with? Like, what is going on? And for me, I'm not here for it because it's like you end up almost in some sort of disagreement, altercation with someone that you didn't even start having that sort of disagreement with to begin with because they said something that irritated you during the conversation and now things have escalated. Now, let's watch. Oh, and listen, I, listen, all I'm saying is if he shows up at different spots, if not from me or Shanice, no, invite no, no. him out. Correct. It would never happen. Okay, I'm, just I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you guys know. Yeah, like, That's what I want to clarity of. Okay. There is now a question of does Mariah have something up her sleeve? I don't know what Phil's been telling you. But what it can cool. That is something I wanted to flag. I feel like Phil is an ish starter. The way he relayed the conversation, right, to Bria, I feel like is what irritated Bria. It's always like one of those people, right, that will throw darts and throw stones and stuff and hope like something sticks. They will stare at the pots and stare it and stare it because they are vindictive about the fact that you said they can't come. So I feel like Phil was salty about the fact that he can't come to and be on the show. So now, guess what he's gonna do? He's gonna stir the pot. Because Uncle Wilson Drama, I wonder he's not there. I'm like, Phil, bro, chill. You know, and so I agree with what Jasmine is saying. Like, I don't know what Phil has told you. Came to Mariah, nobody considered what Bria had gone through with her. I think it's because it's like. Shush, man. Shush. Jordan. Jordan was one of my faves in season one, but I feel like right now I don't know what she's doing. I feel like she just has it in for Jasmine, and I don't understand. Yes, she's right about Bria's feelings about no one else is really sticking in for her or sticking up for her when it comes to Mariah. But at the same time, she was just putting it out for Phil. And unfortunately, it didn't work out well for her. So, like, I just don't understand, like, what's the, like, why she's putting her mouth in it. Because now things are just going to escalate for no reason. Uh, Mariah, you what took you the initiative to, to buy the flight before Thank you, you had spoken oh, to her. That's her to that's 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 Yeah, I honestly feel like this season, I, I think people were really upset with Jasmine last season. People were really upset with her, the way she handled herself. I think people really, really were upset with her. And I feel like they have built disdain for Jasmine since season one. And I feel like she's going to have to work to try and clean up these friendships because the way everybody is now coming at her about this very, it's, it's a, it's a, I understand how Bria feels, but it's not that big of an issue for it to escalate to this point. It's like everyone is so emotionally charged about something that ain't that deep. Now, 
like I said, Gruda has a valid reason for being upset. It's like the illusion of choice. I talked about it. But I feel like the others sort of jumping on it and all facing Jasmine it's definitely disheartening. They should have just let her have the conversation with Bria and let them talk it through without interruptions. That's a big fear, but to me, that's an economic choice. At this point, between Mariah and she's right, that's an economic choice. If she needs to buy her flight earlier so she can so it can be better then let her buy her flight ticket earlier for her sake like it should not be that deep the way everyone is moving is moving like i'm so pressed about the issue and i'm just like you ain't got nothing to do with you leave bria in her mess like let bria have the conversation that she wants to have with jasmine without interruptions please now it just seems like the whole night is solid with this conversation. People consider Bria's feelings. Do I think she really feels as deeply as she's expressing about Mariah right now? No, but she has a valid point. So this is the thing. So you feel that she doesn't feel as as strongly about Mariah, right? On this issue. But yet you decided to stick up for her against Jasmine to be going on and talking about the issue. The same issue you don't feel like your friend Bria feels that strongly about. Can you see how problematic that sounds to begin with? You should have just left them to squash it and have the conversations. But because you don't really like Jasmine right now, you're like, I'm a team up and jump in and focus and, and you know, focus attention on Jasmine. And Jasmine's gonna have to own up to that. Own up to what exactly, ma'am? Own up to what exactly? To what exactly? <laughs> like, I'm just like, own up to what exactly? She didn't book the tickets, as far as I know. Now, maybe perhaps what she could own up to is, but then I feel like, in the conversation she has owned up to because she said that's more of an economic choice if someone decides to book the ticket earlier if they had done that with phil we would be looking at them crazy yeah, exactly yeah. what the we have to acknowledge the fact that jazz did bring it up she's the only one that did say hey we had a meeting about this but i don't think that's the it's point that's not the point okay my declined so now i need to try and quickly put my thing on do not disturb normally it's on do not disturb i don't know what has happened oh i'm so sorry if you guys can hear it i apologize this is what happens right it's like the one time when you don't need anyone one time i do this is when i get all these calls and i'm like you lot don't be calling me normally but now all of a sudden you be calling me anyways i apologize let's go back I'm at okay so of course now okay let me just go back a little bit all right let's go back a little bit Point. Okay, my bad. Damn, my bad. She tried to step in, tried to, in to stay, used to stick up for Jasmine, and got shut down completely. And she was like, "Wow, my bad." I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shut the up. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. It's, it is that yeah, deep. Okay, Bria. Bria is always upset about something. Honestly speaking, I, I, I care less. So what I'm gonna do is now give the last yeah. question. Are you will Bria got upset and decided to leave? So I don't know if he's gonna play in this clip or if it started off with that because it did a little bit further, but let's let's keep going. Willing to talk yeah. to Summer right now? Yeah. Oh, so that <sighs> when I say put cheese on the spot, in a way, I kinda like that they did that and I was like, why? I feel like because Shanice is a non-confrontational person and I feel like if they don't do that, the conversation might never happen. 
like it would both just be in each other's spaces no one would say anything and then later on they would probably no longer have a friendship and everyone would be wondering like how did we get here i honestly feel like them actually being like are you gonna have a conversation is actually probably what Shanice and Summer actually need because if not it would have just been an issue that would have just continued and continued for longer than it needed to it's a lot my brain's fried I've never had this many conversations in my life <laughs> yes ma'am I know for non-confrontational people listening having a conversation about how someone has hurt you can be the most devastating nerve-wracking thing to do i completely understand because i've been there i don't be liking confrontation at all but despite that i still have the conversation and i think shanice definitely needs to grow a little bit more in that area where you're just like yeah i do i don't like what you did this is how i feel this is how it made me feel um you know so i appreciated her in this moment for being transparent about how she felt and um, even though like of course my preference would never be to have it in front of the group but of course it was brought up so i understand having the conversation in front of everyone let's just get it out in the open and squash it and everybody can go their merry way all right the reason why i felt triggered um the other night is because you know i lost my job yep and this is the thing someone lost their job and then you're talking about them not being stressed like those kind of things can be triggering right like oh she ain't got money right now to afford anything now <laughs> even if she had the money she'll still be looking the way she looks right it could be that but still as your friend you got to be riding i'm not about to say my friend is the worst dress i'm not saying nothing if I don't have a nothing good or nothing necessary about my friend, I'm keeping quiet. It wasn't even so much question to begin with, so there was no need for that at all. But I love the way Shanice expressed herself, and I think she needs to do more of that because she came across very, very articulated way in which she expressed herself. I'm just going to play that for you guys. Like, I don't have the funds right now to even, like, buy new clothes. And and I absolutely love how she was honest. I feel like when you want to have these conversations, just be honest. Be honest about how you feel. Be honest about your position. Be honest about why you feel the way you feel. Um, if someone really loves you and they are your friend, they would they would empathize with your feelings and where it is you're coming from. They may not agree with certain things, but then at least there would be the empathy there. Like, if my friend said she was hurt about something I said, I don't care if I'm right or wrong. I'm so sorry. You know, hurting your feelings is not something that I would want to do as a friend. If I really say I'm a friend and I really root for you, then that is not something I would want to do. So I completely feel her when, you come, when, when it comes to that. I always feel like there's some tension between us. I have trust issues. That's why I have therapists. Valid. Like, that's just me. I've never felt tension with. Yeah. It's interesting. She said she feels there's always some tension between them. Um, and Summer said she doesn't feel that way. It's interesting because sometimes with non confrontational people, they can have issues with you and not discuss it. So, from their end, there could be tension in relation to you. Right? they won't say how they feel for the most part so you are walking around thinking everything is good and then they start to act weird towards you i'll give you an example someone who we were best friends at the time she had certain issues with me she never communicated them never talked about what the issues were then in her feet her behaviors towards me every every time during my birthday she acts up um and she's not there for me on birthdays and um, but she expects the world of me right and then also like she would then i remember she was then having conversations with someone else about me and i was just like why not just have the conversation with me if that's how you're feeling let's talk about it right instead you're saying stuff like what 
Shanice is seeing right now. Um, and I just personally feel like if you don't want to ruin your friendships, be non-confrontational is not the way to go. You need to have conversations so that there could be resolved, so that you don't become resentful, so that you don't have or things within your heart that then stops you from being able to be your true self. Like, I feel personally that that relationship became strained because of non-confrontation. Because who knows? Maybe whatever feelings she had within herself were valid. I don't know. But then every time I ask you direct questions about how you're behaving towards me, you undermine it, you minimize it, and just say, oh, you're just going through a lot. But then when you're having conversations with other people, you're saying ish about me and how you feel about me. But then to me, when I confront you and ask you questions, you don't want to say what the issue is. And I feel like sometimes in the bid to not be confrontational and you're like, oh, you know, you can actually ruin your relationship more than actually help it grow. That's just something I'm saying. I don't know who this message is for, but if it's for you, receive it. That's all I'm going to say. Let's keep watching the clip. You. So that's something we have to probably talk about. But it's not that you don't look good. You have the best body at this table. Like you put in the. Okay. When she said that, everyone's faces were just like, no, no. Shanice does have one of the best bodies, I'll be honest. She really does. But then all of them are beautiful. All of them have really nice bodies. So it is what it is on that one, to be honest with you. Work. <laughs> <laughs> the way everyone was just looking, I'm just like, I love how Jasmine just seemed unbothered. Like, at the end of the day, it's a compliment. Like, why are you all so pressed about the fact that she said she has the best bodies here? Like, Someone said that about me or around me about my friend. I'm like, yeah, she and does. Like, it's not a it's not a big deal. I know my body's banging, so competition. That's just, it's just what it is. Simple. Stop, it's not funny right now. Who's not, laughing? Not you. And this is the thing, this is what I mean. There is an audience. You're having you're trying to have a same conversation. You're trying to big up your friend and say, oh, she has one of the best bodies, blah, 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 or has the best body here. And then you now have chatter, people laughing in the background, people interrupting. These things are not good for a nice, non-toxic, peaceful conversation. Because you have like different people with their little opinion, chit-chatting and interrupting. So, of course, it's now about to be a madness. Let's watch. Here they were. I'm not talking about you. They're why like, are you turning oh. up? Jordan, why are you disturbing this woman? This woman is trying to have a conversation. Why do you, why do you think it's appropriate for you to interrupt her? Then say to her, why is she turning up? Leave her alone. If it does not directly apply to you, leave her alone what's that got to do with you and this is the thing all that interruption is just going to trigger somebody especially if you're having a conversation with that high pitch or high tone of yours like see what will happen now let me just look her it was not my intent to hurt you and i appreciate that but the thing is you shouldn't put any of your friends down and i'm sorry I completely agree. And then Brielle, she's ready to go home. I'm like, get on the way, please. Like, I do not care. Just go. Go to wherever it is you want to go. So basically, the bottom line is they squashed it. Bria left. Bria is so childish. I don't, like, she's so childish. I cannot even. Um, and basically, Nick ran after her and I think Joy as well. Um, and I'm going to play what Preston says because what Preston says is how I'm feeling. Martha and Martha's Vineyard, I hope it's to New York. All right, I got to back up a little bit more so you guys can hear what... Bria walks out so often that the next time she walks out of Martha's Vineyard, I hope it's to New York. Um, um period. <laughs> like, honestly, she's doing too much that if she decides to walk off and not show up anymore, I would not actually care. 
I just think she absolutely does too much. I do not like it. It's like you're so dramatic about every single thing. I'm give it a break, Bria. Give it a break. That's just how I feel. So yeah, Preston, I'm with you on this. Honestly, I am with you on this. Or to Germany. We'll be right back. Come on, Shanice. Come on. Preston, was I wrong? Jordan doesn't. Yes, she does too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's back this up because I want Yes, she does too, for sure. Yeah, when I sometimes divorce talk. And Jordan doesn't. Okay, let's let's go back. So of course, oh, no. how to Jordan too? You do sometimes raise your voice when you're talking to people. And Jordan. So about the whole thing with Jordan, right? And then they're like, oh, you know, you sometimes raise your voice when you're talking to people. And then she's like, and Jordan doesn't, because what it feels like is when Jordan does it, nobody says anything, but. Let her do it or someone else do it. Then, like, oh no, why are you raising your voice? And I think it's never okay for you to be raising your voice at people. That's just not right. Let's let's call it a spade a spade, irrespective of who it is, who it's not. It's not right. So I completely understand where Summer is coming from. And I also agree that Summer also does raise her voice. So I feel like across the board, they need to nip that in the bud. If you're talking to me, there ain't no reason for you to be raising your voice at me. And I will not be raising my voice at you. Let's just have some mutual respect. Let it be that and let it be done. But yeah, I think those were the highlights for me in terms of to um, the episode. Let me know what you guys think about that. Was there anything that stood out to you from this episode? Also, do you like this version of like the reviews and recaps? Or would you prefer a version where they would play clips? Also, before I forget, shout out to OMFG Reality TV on Instagram for these clips. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys prefer this style. Um, this style definitely takes a lot more effort for me and a lot more time. But if you guys want it, I got y'all. So let me know what you guys think. Also, everyone, please like, don't forget to share, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that bell button right next to it. So, you know, every single time that I post. Also, please, like, let me know in the comment section what your thoughts about, what you guys think, rather, about all of the shenanigans in this episode and some of the clips. So, yeah, just, like, be putting what you guys think in the chat. Um, and, yeah, we'll continue the conversation in the chat. Um, and, yeah, I think that is all I have for you guys about today. Thank you so much for staying with me, for hanging with me. I hope you've enjoyed it um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye.